Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Let's get into the week ahead and what's coming up uh, starting the 29th of October. So in the US, all eyes are on the Fed's interest rate decision and the labor market report followed by ISM manufacturing and services, PMI, jolts, job openings and factory orders. All um, of those data really kind of point to how the economy uh, is doing. And we'll get into the GDP, um, um, the US GDP uh, in a little bit. Uh, internationally, uh, central bank interest rate decisions from the UK and Japan will be of utmost importance. Inflation rate for the euro area, Germany and Switzerland will be closely monitored. Furthermore, Q3 GDP growth rates in Germany and the euro area will be scrutinized. Manufacturing and services PMI, PMIs, particularly in China, Will, as well as manufacturing PMIs in Canada will offer insights into global economic dynamics. So lots going on this week. And um, for those of you who are in the private mentoring group, um, just to let you know that if you go to the trading videos channel, click on that, uh, take you to a link, then just log in with the password. And I've got a trading videos channel where, where I post all of the, uh, the week's videos. You can see all the past week's videos and uh, I have an in-depth um, technical and fundamental analysis um, and also as well uh, the 25th of October where we have a group, we had the group call uh, that's about an hour and 51 minutes long uh, that goes into a lot of detail as well so just in case you missed that. So um, let's get into some of the technicals and actually starting off not on gold but on the uh, dollar index and this week um, the uh, the dollar had some decent news. So the U.S. economy grew at a 4.9% pace last quarter, fastest since 2021. So consumer spending jumped at 4% rate, also the most since 2021. And core PCE price index increases less than forecast, um, which is uh, which is actually a uh, decent news for the. Uh, for the Fed and um, the US economy grew at the fastest pace in nearly two years last quarter on the burst of consumer spending, which will be tested in the coming months. So there's a lot of been a lot of doom and gloom around the uh, the dollar and an expected uh, recession, but that doesn't seem to be appearing for now. So gross domestic product accelerated to a 4.9% annualized rate, more than double the second quarter pace, according to the government's preliminary estimate on Thursday. The economy's main growth engine personal spending jumped four percent also the most since 2021 so um we did have also as well some um some more core prices jump the most in four months of spending ticks uh, up and this was on friday so excluding food and energy prices rose 0.3 percent in september cars prescription drugs and travel drive up uh, drive pickup in spending so um yeah, it seems like uh, here the underlying U.S. inflation picks up with consumer spending. So, um, again, it is uh, quite all positive for the uh, for the U.S. economy at the moment. Now, uh, it doesn't look like in November the Fed watch tool, um, which uh, shows the probability of a rate hike and what the market is kind of pricing in and what it's not. December seems like definitely a 99% chance of a no change. Now, December is really the place to watch. And uh, it does still look like the probability of a no change is um, being priced into the market. And in fact, a 19.2% chance of a hike, which um, since last month has actually come down a bit. It stayed kind of stable uh, over the past uh, week or so. But um, yeah, I think the dollar is still a buy on pullbacks. Not too sure if it's going to go a lot higher from now, but I think on any decent pullbacks, I think the dollar should be a decent buy. The dollar has literally since uh, since mid July just gone in this massive uh, tear. If we look at the weekly time frame, um, you know, you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, positive closes, uh, higher high closes, and then we. We've got um, prices really coming around uh, uh, to uh, been kind of ranging or auctioning for the past uh, couple of weeks. So I think um, the upward upside uh, uh, 
possibility of prices going higher. Um, of course it can, but uh, I think we're really buying at expensive areas. So for me, I think the, uh, the again, the path of least resistance is still to the upside, but really on pullbacks. And we've got a pullback um, earlier in the week, which uh, I managed to buy uh, the euro dollar in terms of um, shorting and buying a dollar against the euro, which was a, which was actually a really nice trade. I'll go over that. And um, yeah, but I think the dollar may have run out of a bit of steam to the to the upside, regardless of the news. I just think that um, I think the uh, there's there's a, a lot of traders who are heavily long, and I think there's a lot of liquidity below the market, so the market might actually start to pull back before looking at um, uh, recontinuing going higher as the, as the data supports it. So but my bias is still to the upside, but just be cautious that if you are looking to buy the dollar that you are really buying uh, at expensive areas, so a pullback is needed and then look for buy trades on um, other dollar uh, currencies, um, dollar crosses I should say. Uh, looking at the dollar yen and dollar yen um, again there was um, talks of intervention support at 150 and um, now we're seeing speculation uh, over the Bank of Japan policy tweak builds in run up to meetings. So there's a meeting this week, I think it's on Tuesday, and speculation that the Bank of England, sorry, Bank of Japan uh, will, one second, let me just uh, ignore that, uh, will make some kind of policy move this month, continues to build with the weak yen, higher bond yield, and stronger than expected inflation fueling the market chatter. So um, if they do actually start to intervene into the market, or at least uh, start to um, uh, become a bit more hawkish, uh, then in fact, I think there is definitely a lot of room to the downside. So this could actually be uh, one of the, uh, uh, the high of the market. But if the Bank of Japan come out as being quite dovish, then I would expect really the prices to go um, a lot higher. Uh, because the dollar is actually quite uh, strong in the Japanese yen. If, if it doesn't convince the market that it's going to intervene or um, at least uh, change monetary policy soon in terms of yield curve control, then um, yeah, I think, I think that's going to weigh continually on the Japanese yen. So that's where we are with the dollar yen. In terms of uh, levels, in fact, uh, there are... Well, there is a decent level around here from a daily perspective, and then you've got actually a decent level here. I think those two levels are decent. Uh, let me just move up this uh, supply zone to probably just somewhere around there. So um, we do have higher highs, higher lows being made. You've got that there. Technically, there's a, a demand zone there, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fact just get rid of this one here and yeah I think any pullbacks into uh, this zone here I think is is this level here with horizontal uh, support in that area is decent so the 148 but the 14730s is probably the, the cheaper area to look for some uh, buy trades looking at the dollar CAD uh, was was looking for at least a buy trade on this and a pullback unfortunately didn't get one and prices have gone um, a lot higher and that makes sense when you consider um, the um, the fundamental dynamics of the uh, the dollar versus the Canadian dollar right and uh, the Bank of uh, Canada did come out and said that they were holding rates but it was more due to their economy not doing so great so just zooming out a little bit uh, I guess we're up into really these highs from uh, 20, October 2022 so up into that supply zone there and uh, wait, again, awaiting a pullback really on uh, on the uh, dollar CAD in order to try to look for some long trades. Uh, so that's where you know we are. I think for uh, the dollar CAD, uh, if you do want to get short, I think anywhere probably of right now is decent. Some traders might notice there's also a stop hunt. There might be a stop hunt above here, but it's best to trade technical patterns in alignment with fundamentals. Um, as fundamentals is really what's going to drive prices uh, higher or lower. Just because you see a technical pattern doesn't mean that the market's going to really react to that. If you want to increase your chances 
of uh, your technicals working out, it's definitely prudent to, uh, or important, I should say, to uh, to um, trade in alignment with the fundamentals. So um, for me, the US dollar is the uh, the buy at the moment in terms of uh, out of the uh, US dollar and the Canadian dollar. So waiting for a pullback on that. Uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, again, we're saying par for these resistance is to the downside. Uh, was waiting for a pullback on this um, this week, but obviously just kept making lower lows. I still think that uh, this area is, a, is quite a nice buy, but there's also a uh, supply zone right on top of that demand zone right there. So I think any pullbacks uh, from an intraday perspective, I think this area here is quite nice as well, right there. And um, yeah, I think that's decent. Uh, and then you've got the level just above that, uh, this, uh, the 0 0.59 uh, area. So uh, yeah, I think those two areas of prices do pull back. Those would be where I'd be looking for short trades. Of course, that's my bias. But if you are looking for any kind of long trades, I think now is a decent time. But the question is, why would you want to buy the New Zealand dollar against the US dollar? Of course, you can. And there is, um, there are reasons to, or there could be reasons to, if the dollar comes out with some disappointing news. But for now, um, I do think that the, uh, the New Zealand dollar... Um, uh, the US dollar is, is the buy, especially in a risk off environment, which we're in at the moment. Uh, pound dollar, again, we've pretty much gone sideways uh, so far this week. Now, we do have, in fact, quite a large uh, supply zone around here. And um, yeah, I think any pullbacks uh, are decent. Uh, buying opportunities in terms of uh, buying the US dollar. Now, fundamentally, the pound isn't looking fantastic uh, in comparison to the US. It says here that Bank of England likely to highlight recession risk ahead of next recession. So central banks forecast add to worries for Sunak's government and last outlook was for near stagnant growth through 2025. So the Bank of England this week is likely to forecast a bleak period for the UK economy in the months ahead leading up to the next general election, adding to worries for Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's government. So you can clearly see the difference between, uh, you know, looking at the US economy where we're seeing, um, you know, the economy growing um, and no signs really of any kind of recession and then you go to the Bank of England and you're seeing uh, fears of a recession so again for me why would I want to buy uh, the pound even if the pound you know retraces back up to this area here it doesn't necessarily mean you should be buying the pound um, you know if anything just look for uh, well for me anyway what I do is I just look for uh, cheaper prices to uh, to short at so if it comes up to any of these areas at 2250 23 23 50s then for me that is a really nice uh, buy again as long as the data supports the uh, the narrative of course on both ends so continued decent news for the pound and um, worsening news for the uh, well see continued good news for the uh, dollar and uh, worse news for the pound so that's really where I am. But there is, if you do want to be a buyer of the uh, the pound, then this uh, 1.2 area is a decent area to look for a buy technically, but I wouldn't expect that to hold if uh, there is continued bad news for the pound. Uh, pound, uh, yen, again, we've really kind of, kind of been supported at this area of 181s. Um, you would think that in a risk-off environment, the yen should be... The, the trade last week prices did come up to this area, as I said, what was it? I didn't say it was definitely gonna come up here, but I said if it does come up here, then that'd be a nice short, which obviously it ended up being, uh, depending on whether you would have got in somewhere around here on the lower time frame, right? So risk off, um, the yen should be uh, the, the buy over the pound. So, um, but we're still in this uh, this 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 range um, and this auction from one eight threes to the one uh, eight one round number. So, unless prices you know start to come you know down below that, then you're looking for a pullback into a uh, supply zone, which would be somewhere around here. But for now, there's no supply zone because prices haven't made lower lows.
So um, that would be where I'm looking uh, to uh, to take a trade to buy the yen. But again, the yen, a bit tricky if, if the uh, Bank of Japan remain dovish, then it's going to be, uh, uh, again, probably more of an auction in market rather than prices, you know, selling off or going to the upside. So I think in order for you to buy the, uh, the yen, you'd have to really get a lot of confirmation from the Bank of Japan. Now, the euro dollar, euro dollar, um, uh, we entered into a, I say we, but uh, I did and uh, some of the guys entered into a, a decent trade this week and it was a stop hunt around um, the 106s and prices really came up to a nice level. Uh, broke through that supply zone but ended up into this supply zone and then uh, took a short trade. In fact, let me go to the, uh, the um, Discord room and then you can see what I posted there. So this was a trade um, update matter of fact. So I'd said if ever, anyone is in short around here to really kind of look to take some sort of profits. And this was uh, the, um, the, uh, the trade. We could see where we see a, a level that had been highlighted and then we saw the entry around here and first profits taken and looking for second uh, profit targets. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, well, that's after the fact. But in fact, if you if you click here, uh, this was a message that had been um, sent on the 24th of October. So this was the, uh, again, the uh, the setup, which was right around here. I'd highlighted this from um, uh, at the time, 24th, go to the, the, the chart. And that was basically, this happened on the 24th. So, and it also as well, there was, um, I posted some charts just before that as well, or which was highlighting this. And if anyone was in the, um, uh, is in the lifetime members, I did show you guys, if you go to the educational alerts channel, um, I showed you guys where the, uh, the alert was when, uh, prices did, um, uh, trigger, um, that that stop hunt over there. So um, really nice trade uh, this week. It was the only trade I really took this week. So um, been profitable week so far on that one trade. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens if it prices continue to go to the downside and complete the uh, the second uh, profit target. So at the moment we have um, yeah probably if you're looking for any kind of pullbacks, either one of two things is going to be either a pullback into that high there, or you're looking for lower lows and then a pullback into a supply zone before going uh, short. So I think that's really the only way uh, to kind of capitalize from a dollar um, perspective. If you do want to buy the Euro, which for me, um, looking at the Euro news, it doesn't look like you'd want to buy the Euro because the ECB's high interest rates probably stalled the Eurozone economy. And again, um, the, it goes back to high interest rates stalling the economy. So the third quarter data seems showing zero growth or negative result. So inflation is expected to have slowed markedly in October. So um, both of those things uh, should prevent the ECB from hiking rates even further. So the Euro region economy stalled uh, or even contracted in the third quarter under cumulative weight of successive interest rate hikes according to forecasters all but four of the 21 29 economists surveyed by bloomberg predicted or predict sorry data on tuesday to show gross domestic product either stagnated or shrank further only a brief spurt of expansion during the three months through june a separate report is likely to reveal noticeably weak inflation in october so um, again if you look at the contrast between what's happening with the uh, in the in the US and uh, what's happening in Europe again you can see who is uh, the, the 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 better of uh, of the two so for me any pullbacks in price just mean that you can short for a or I can short anyway for a better value right so that's really where I uh, I am but if you do want to be a buyer of the dollar then now or at the absolute lows is are a decent technically Euro yen again came up to this uh, this area last week. I was looking for a little bit of a stop hunt above the uh, high, and even though there was one, it 
just didn't satisfy uh, some of the criteria so um, unfortunately there was no entry on this even though i've been waiting for it but i do think a pullback into this zone or even higher could be a really nice uh, short but again the confirmation would need to be had with um uh, with the bank of japan uh, on tuesday if you're looking for a buy on the euro then i think anything down now or probably uh, just further down into the 157 round number is going to be where you're probably looking for a potential buy but again buying the euro is going to be a tough one um aussie dollar um the australian dollar is something that i'm actually a bit more bullish on but just not against the us dollar i do think that the australian dollar is a buy against some other currencies like the euro or the pound so um there was actually a really nice stop hunt for anyone uh who uh, was trading this during the week there was the stop hunt there and then you saw prices go to the upside but it would have been a very tough buy technically uh, if you were buying the uh, the australian dollar against the uh, us dollar although that trade would have been profitable but um i think for me if i was looking to trade this it'd still be to the downside so any pullbacks up into these zones here i think are where you'd want to look for a short trade but for me i'm not really looking to take this pair um aussie yen again a bit another pretty tricky pair because there are reasons to kind of buy the australian dollar in a risk on environment but in a risk off environment it shouldn't do great and we've just seen really the market uh you know range between this high and this low which makes all the sense in the world so the market's just agreeing that the, uh, the the exchange rate is worth between 95 or 96s to what 94s over the past um, a couple of weeks and so unless uh, there's a there's a there's a fundamental or risk sentiment catalyst you're either going to see prices do something like that eventually or you know move to the downside so um, again there was a pullback into the supply zone and then it sold off so uh, there was a trade there if you were looking to take the Aussie uh, yen short and buy the yen. Um, I do think that if you are looking to buy the Australian dollar, it would have to be really down by the 93.80 area or just below. So um, a tricky pair at the moment, but uh, there's opportunities on that. And finally, gold. Gold making, um, breaking past the $2,000 mark. So again, gold jumps past $2,000 as Israel Hamas clash raises haven allure and um again uh, this is uh, the latest from bloomberg uh, this is from today sunday the 29th it says here that israel deepens a war with hamas that has no end in sight is the uh, is the um the headlines of ground invasion of gaza start slowly in day by day approach a new war phase will pressure hamas to free host hostages says officials now again um ground invasions it seems like you know the next phase potential escalations so risk should remain um off and um and so gold should probably continue to still be a buy although i am cautious of buying gold at highs if you are looking to buy gold then really the the next place to kind of buy gold would be somewhere around this uh this demand zone right here between the 1972 and the 1953 this is the first area you'd want to look towards buying gold but the better bargain would be if the price of gold goes down to like the 1930s to the 1910s i think that's going to be uh, a very nice uh, buy and bargain if you can get it and if risk continues to uh, remain off so um gold and the dollar at the moment potentially uh, rising um in price of course both are risk off um, assets or considered risk off assets so they can move in the same direction but um, it just depends on whether um, you know investors uh, want to put their money more in gold or more into the dollar. So um, yeah, I think uh, gold is is going to be continue to be a buy at least at least in the short term until the uh, the the uh, conflict in um, in uh, the uh, Palestinian region um, uh, resolves itself. So. Uh, that's it for this week guys hope you had a uh, uh, a great week last week and i hope you have a great week this week and um, i wish you all the best with your trading and uh, speak to you all soon take care